So for the first time in nearly 20 years, arguably the three biggest stars in the NBA and their teams are going home before the start of round two. LeBron, Steph, and KD all had unceremonious exits from this year's postseason. And it really feels like a wind of change is blowing through the NBA right now. I mean, it's bittersweet. Like, LeBron is my favorite player ever. I'll cherish the memories of those Warriors versus Cavs series. But at the same time, this is the natural cycle of the NBA. The old players come out and the new players come in. And I'm hyped for the new crop of NBA stars to take over the league. Before we start talking about the new era in the NBA, if you haven't already, make sure to leave this video a like, give us a subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on one of our videos. But first, a word from the sponsor of today's video, Rocket Money. So I just recently found out that for the past six months, I had been paying for an Adobe stock subscription that I was not using. And that's where the sponsor of today's video, Rocket Money, comes in. Rocket Money is the app that you need to save more and manage your money better. Rocket Money can help you identify and cancel unwanted subscriptions. You can even do it within the app. All it takes is a couple of taps. And on average, Rocket Money saves its customers $720 a year and has saved customers over $500 million in canceled subscriptions. Rocket Money can also help you lower your bills. Simply upload a photo of your bill and Rocket Money will negotiate it for you. Probably would help if you live in Portland. Jesus Christ. Rocket Money can also help you set budgets, they can analyze your spending habits, and they can create a budget that works for your lifestyle. They can help you identify when you're buying things that you really don't need to buy. Maybe like Blazer tickets this past year. So head to rocketmoney.com slash synthetic sports or use the link in the description to get started for free today. Once again, that's rocketmoney.com slash synthetic sports or use the link in the description and join 5 million members using Rocket Money today. So like I said in the intro, it's the first time since 2005 that none of Steph, Durant, or LeBron will have made it to the second round. First time in nearly 20 years. And I mean, depending on what happens tonight, Kawhi, PG, Harden, and Russ, they might all be out too. So that's another crop of stars from the previous era. And it just, it feels like it's a big changing of the guard moment. You know, the NBA that a lot of us grew up watching is finally, you know, starting to end and it's time for the next generation of stars to take over. Not exactly the first time it's happened for us. I mean, we remember the NBA pre-Durant and pre steph when it was Wade, Mello, KG, Shaq, and Duncan. But this is like the first generation of players that we've seen their beginning and we've seen their end. Yeah, basically outside of LeBron, I remember all these guys being drafted. I remember their entire careers. So it's just really weird to feel. And we've never seen the NBA without LeBron. Like we started watching in the mid to late 2000s. LeBron was there. He was one of the best players in the league. Ever since then, he's basically been one of the best players in the league. Obviously, he's starting to regress as he gets older, but it's going to be weird just not seeing LeBron James out there on a nightly basis. He has been the one constant in our entire time as NBA fans. Yeah, but I mean, this year, like, it really felt like the change in the guard because none of their teams were really that competitive. You had the Suns. We just made the video on them. They were swept in embarrassing fashion. LeBron's Lakers were dispatched in a gentleman's sweep. I mean, sure, the games were close, but they had no chance of beating the Nuggets. And then the Warriors didn't even make the playoffs and got thumped by the Kings in the play-in tournament. So not even like past years where the Lakers, you know, they, they were good last year, made the conference finals. Steph and the Warriors won the title the year prior. Whatever, you could go back to 2021 with Durant. None of their teams were even remotely close to competing this year. And we kind of got tricked by them still. I mean, because they have the big name recognition and they've been around forever. I mean, both of us picked Phoenix to beat Minnesota. You picked the Lakers to at least be competitive against the Nuggets. And even up until they got beat down by the Kings in the play-in tournament, I was still hearing people say that, oh, if the Warriors make the playoffs, you know, <laughs> Oklahoma City doesn't want to see them. It's like, you really? sure about that? And the other thing about it is like, these teams are in terrible situations. All of them for different reasons. First, you have the Suns. We detailed on Monday, like they're stuck with their core. They have Bradley Beal's untradeable contract. He's also untradeable because he has no trade clause. Booker and KD are still really good, but they're also making a ton of money. So they have no cap space and no first round picks till 2030. The Warriors are in a little better spot. I mean, they have some young players. They got Kuminga who really had a breakout year this year. They have some kind of more flexible 
flexibility. Clay is a free agent, but there's also no guarantee he comes back. So who knows what they'll do. And then the Lakers, maybe they're in the best spot because you got LeBron and AD. LeBron though, he's a free agent. So no guarantees he comes back. We both think he will, but still like so much uncertainty for these teams. And it feels like they are nowhere near competing whatsoever. Which is so weird to think about. Going for like an NBA where your three biggest stars next year, because they still probably will be the three biggest stars in the league next year. It's just not a league where they're going to be competitive. I mean, at least in terms of like jersey sales, watching, social media views, all that stuff. Like there's still the top. I know like Anthony Edwards, you know, he's starting to pop off. Tatum, Luca, Shea, Wemby, like they're all rising in popularity and they will eventually overtake these guys for sure. But at the time being, even though they're not the best players in the league, they are by far the most popular players and it's not even close. So one thing I want to ask is, is this good for the NBA? Because I've seen a lot of people on like talk shows and whatnot and asking online. It's like, oh, is this a good thing for the NBA that your three biggest and most marketable stars are out this early? Personally, I think it's phenomenal. Will the ratings for the playoffs be down this year? Yeah, probably. So in the short term, maybe it's not the best thing in the world, but I'm going to use a wrestling analogy, which you won't understand, okay. uh, but I think plenty of people <laughs> will. So wrestling from like 2016 to 2020, they had a really big problem with creating new stars and they had to rely on part-time legends like, you know, guys you probably know, Undertaker, yep. Brock Lesnar, Cena, Triple H. They had to rely on those guys to come in to generate interest in their matches. But unlike wrestling, when an NBA player retires, they're gone. Like when LeBron's gone, he's gone for good. You can't just bring him back in, have him play a game to pop a rating. And so at a certain point, it's more vital for the NBA to invest in their young stars and say, look, these guys are great. They're big, they're marketable. They carried us forever. But we also got these young lions that are coming up, that are making noise, that are great hoopers that you should also get invested in. And especially now it's the playoffs. It's a time where a lot of more casuals tune in than usual. And the fact that your three biggest stars are out of the way and the younger generation gets all the spotlight. I mean, maybe there are some guys who have fallen out of love with the NBA. You know, they don't really tune in except for LeBron and Stephen Durant. And they tune in, they say, man, this Luka Doncic guy, like he's incredible. Or Anthony Edwards, like see that dunk he had over KD in game four? Like, holy shit, this guy is insane. And then they become fans again. Like these are the guys that are going to carry the league for the next 10 plus years. And I think it's a great thing that they get these playoffs all to themselves. Well, yeah, obviously like this is just the natural cycle. Like you just, LeBron's not going to play till he's 60. They don't have that robot technology at least yet so it's gonna have to happen and in the short term kind of like you said with the ratings it's gonna be bad for the league itself like not having those stars to you know kind of carry the ratings and everything it's bad long term obviously it's good because like i said you need the new guys to replace them and i'm a lot more confident like now than maybe i was two years ago when it was like eh, like who's kind of the up and coming guys is it like jaw like tatum i don't know like now i kind of feel set like wemby obviously i to that rookie year like that dude for the next 20 years is going to be insane anthony edwards what he did this season and just kind of like the hype he carries around in the highlight plays like he's a face the league type guy and then you got shay luca tatum like you can go down the list so i'm feeling a lot more confident now and in the short term you know the casual fan isn't going to watch as much but give it you know five years the league is perfectly fine there's so many good young players like there's so much talent in the league it's not going to be a problem long term a couple years sure long term the league is a hundred percent fun you take a hit this year with an eye on the future exactly <laughs> Now that we talked about the old heads who aren't around anymore, let's really quickly talk about who's actually still playing in the playoffs. Well, I'm going to mention one guy who isn't playing in the playoffs, but had a great first round series. Tyrese Maxey, obviously they just got knocked out last night, but had that incredible game five where he scored, what, seven points in 30 seconds, like basically delayed the best moment the Knicks have had in the past, like 15, 20 years by a day or two. Yeah. I mean, most improved player deservingly so, and the leap he's taken over the past couple of years has been insane. You got Tyrese Howell. Burton, you know, he's still playing. Run Rick Carlisle's first playoff series since 2011. He's balling out. Luca, obviously, I mean, he's been a star for a while, but he's still young. You got Shea out in the West. Anthony Edwards, obviously, like the Western Conference is stacked with young talent. Even got Tatum, who doesn't necessarily feel young, but what, he's like 25. So just so many damn good young players, and most of them, unlike the old heads, are actually still playing in the playoffs. Also, underrated thing that I love, a lot of them in small markets, too. 
too. That's true. Shout out the small market fans. I love it. And the main guy I want to mention, Anthony Edwards. Ooh. I mean, he has got a chance with this playoffs, the way he's been playing and the highlights he's putting up. He's got a chance to cement himself as maybe the next face of the league. I mean, what's so nice about him is the dude's cocky as hell. <laughs> he is. And I'm usually not like a fan of cocky players, but they're just so damn good for the league because it creates intrigue. Like there's going to be so many future playoff series where like Anthony Edwards is talking shit to Shea or he's talking shit to Luca, or maybe he even is talking shit to Jokic this next series. Like he's going to create some stories, some moments and everything. And it's going to just be so much fun to watch. I mean, he was talking shit to Kevin Durant, who he, was. He, who he openly admitted is his childhood idol. That's how much like he doesn't give a fuck. And I'll agree with you. Like he's cocky as hell, but he's weirdly like really likable too. Yeah, like, he is. He is such a likable player. He plays hard. He produces nothing but highlight plays. Like he's really got a chance to establish himself as like, like the next star of the NBA. Last thing, I mean, give it like two years. Then we got Wemby coming in. Like we are completely set. Maybe there's a lull for a year or two, but I'm not worried at all. There's going to be some great hoops moving forward and give it another year after that, that's where Scoot Henderson comes in. Then you got Cooper <laughs> Flag. I mean, <laughs> Scoot Henderson throwing lobs to Cooper Flag. Exactly. <laughs> That's the video, guys. Are you excited for this new generation in the NBA? I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving it a like, as it really does help us out. And while you're here, why not check out some of our other videos as well? And don't forget to subscribe to Synthetic Sports.